Hello YouTube. Um, just as a request, I'm going to make this very short video, and it is basically just about how I um, how I uh, maintain my solder iron in order for it um, to be, you know, of constant service and no trouble to me. And the type of solder that I use, even though this is pretty much for an old, I do have a a new reel somewhere it's still in the bag I've lost the bag I'll have to find that today as we've got more, more things to build and I suppose the key to keeping the solder and iron working and, and doing what it is it starts off with a couple of factors from my experience now I'm not trying to profess to be professional here or anything like that but I use my soldering iron pretty much on a daily basis, and I have to have it working if I want it to use. If I want to be able to use it, um, and part of that, one of the biggest um, keys to keeping this working well is don't overheat them. On my solder station, I'll show you. I've got a pretty much cheap rebranded um, solder station. Uh, this uh, Precision Gold A55KJ, I got it from Maplins. Um, I've also seen Aten label on these, Tenma label on these. So it's a pretty generic uh, unit and it's used by quite a few different companies and it is cheap. It's, I think it's cost me £46 from Maplins at the time. Um, and Maplins are pretty good because if you do get problems, then the very next day they'll send out a replacement and even if they haven't picked up the one and that's going to be the next day or the same day pick up, you will still get a replacement. So it's quite good using Maplins um, for some things. But this is a temperature control sort of station and I generally just use the one temperature which is 315 degrees for my solder and for the... Uh, the tips that I use, which are standard tips, um, they come from the, the, the tips that actually come with the solder station. So nothing fancy, nothing fancy at all. I have not had any issues whatsoever with this solder station. In all the use it gets, and when I use it, it's on for like three hours minimum. No, I say that not three hours. That's that's a bit of a porky actually. But when I when I'm building these these, these kits, it's, I, I first of all I put the SMD it's on, um, and we've probably got about 10 minutes of soldering for that, um, and then the rest of it I do all the um, the resistors and most of the push through uh, that I can get on, and I don't know how long it takes really. It takes me about about two and a half hours in total to build one of these kits. And if I were to show you how many, um, let me shift that out of the way. There's always a few spares, yeah, with these. There's always a few spares. And if I were to show you how many spares I have left over from those kits, you can probably get a bit of an imagination on how many of these things I've got. Okay. So and so it goes to show my solder my soldering iron gets some use and it gets some use for some amounts of time at some stages and so i've got to keep it you know, i've got to keep it working and working well i always leave the ones that are not full out of the bags because i want to use those for the first time you know on the next kit i won't use the ones that's in there i'll use the the uh, you know the um, non-full um, strips first. Anyway, digress. Now, this solder paste, this uh, flux, this came with some solder I bought. I can't honestly tell you what the brand of it was, but the solder wasn't very good. And you may find that if you buy some cheap solder, you may not have the greatest of times. This stuff is um, six core. Does it say six core or five core? But it's got. Um, the rosalin, rosin, rosalin flux in it, 
uh, which means that you don't really need to add extra flux or at least I don't find that I do and that's even when I soldering the backs of these boards where you've got the uh, BNC connectors uh, and you have to put the big you know quite a quite a bit of heat to that I don't I don't need any extra flux or anything for doing this solder does work out quite well there are other solders just as good I'm, I'm sure I just use this because I know it works and it's not let me down at all um, and I just like to have stuff that works I do have other solders I've got various other solders that I bought from uh, Asian places that I've not even used yet um, and this is a 0.5 millimeter solder as well I wouldn't suggest using anything bigger than that because 0.3, 0 0.5, great uh, anything bigger than that yeah. you may not get um, the fine workability that you can get out of this sort of solder like I said I'm not a professional I'm not um, trying to um, profess anything I'm just somebody asked me I'm showing them what I do um, so a relatively good solder is always good okay this is um, 60 40 so we've got 60 percent tin and 40 percent lead um, if you're going to use this sort of solder I would suggest that you have some sort of extractor so you're not breathing in the fumes as lovely as they smell they are not very good for you at all um, now I keep the tip of my solder and iron clean by tinning the ends now, I use one of these to clean my solder tip yeah so that's pretty 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 clean there's not all of it just the working area and I always tin I know I've not got my extractor on now but you'll just have to I'm not breathing this and it's actually quite a way in front of me and I tin the end of my solder my solder and iron and let me just I don't normally like to fiddle around with things in my hands so let's stick the solder now back in its hole and I'm fiddling around <clears throat> but uh, whenever I use it I've, I've made comments before that when I've done like just one or two little bits of soldering on a job and it's, it's the little tiny bits of solder that go onto the job I actually use a lot more just to tin the ends before I finish using it to keep the solder in tip condition but it's well worth it because the next time you come back to your solder tip it's going to be in a a good state of use. The air is not going to get to it. It's not going to oxidise that metal at the end, um, and any other chemical processes that might happen, which I'm, I, I don't have the knowledge of the words for. Um, but it's not going to end up with your, your when you're trying to solder that you end up just having solder beading off it. You want to keep this tip nice. Now, some people like to use a sponge with water. Mm. Okay, that's fair enough. It's you know, people's choices. That's, uh, I, I personally don't. I've never used this sponge in here. I only keep it in there because, you know, otherwise it looks like looks like that in there. <laughs> Doesn't look bad, but I don't know. It just seems to look nice with a sponge. <laughs> I, I don't use a sponge. Uh, so, and the reason why I don't use a sponge, this is just my personal preference. Is even though the sound can be okay. I think that when I'm trying to get on and do a job, and especially when you're doing some of the small stuff and you've got tweezers in your hands and you're placing, uh, keeping your, your surface mount device in place, and then you, you've got your. I set out my bit of solder like this so I can just tip onto the end of it. I've got my tweezers in my hand and then I solder. To, to. But if it starts, because um, it will get a little bit mucky, the bits of flux are left on there, it burns. Just that. And I can go straight back to it. The change in temperature by doing that is a lot less than the change in temperature of wiping it in a, a moist sponge. So, and that's the reason. That's the only reason why I do it like that. Um, I'm sure people have got their preferences to how they like to do things, but that's that's just how I like to do mine. Uh, and then that's well, that's pretty much about it. It's all about this last bit really at the end, just making sure that you've cleaned off the tip. I give it a nice clean in here, and pop that away, turn it off and you can leave that. Now, there's two different types that I've found so far, look at all that in there, look. 
two different types that I've found so far. Oops. Just trying to move this bit of paper because I want it to catch what's going to come out here. Of these um, these filings, these uh, these like wall wire wall tip cleaners. Now I've got two in here, and it's going to be hard to distinguish between them. I think one of them's pretty much disintegrated, and the other one is going to last longer. Now there's bits flying off all over the place. I'm not going to pull it apart too much, but that, that I promise you there are two different types in there, and one of them's the more flexible, softer metal, like a brass, and the other one's more like just a, a steel wire wool. Now I found that the steel wire wool ones break down a lot quicker and become a lot more sort of dusty. Um, most of that in there is actually solder. Um, but they come a lot more dusty than the brass ones. The brass ones are a little bit more expensive. But if my preference, yeah, this is, this is I'm trying to pull out the steel. Um, the bigger stranded stuff, the wider stuff is the brass, and the thinner stuff. It's probably going to be really hard to see with this camera. It's not the greatest. But the the thinner stuff, and there's not a lot left of it, because a lot of it goes to dust, really. Um, is the steel wire wool? So I would suggest you know get the get the brass one. I've had this in here now for probably around about a year. And it's still going to do its job. All you got to do is like open it up a little bit, turn it round, so it's, it's like that. And you've got. Let me just turn my solder iron off. Just leave it there, burning away. Um, and then you've got you know more use out of it again. But it is going to come apart a little bit over time, and you're not going to be able to buy one and keep it for life unless there are some out there like that. And if there are, that'd be great. And that's it. That, that, that's how I keep my soldering iron um, serviceable, um, you know, in, in service and, and usable every time I need it. It's just it is down to clean this. Now, if you do, if your tip um, becomes unusable, don't use sandpaper. Don't use anything that's going to be gouging grooves in the tip of this. You don't want to do that. I mean, if you have some very fine, let's say, um, I can't think of what gauge, but that sort of uh, fine metal finishing sandpaper that you may use on a car paint job finishing, uh, then you could probably could just gently, you know, just try and get off um, the day. It's going to be sort of coated. I'm not exactly sure what it's coated with, but it's a it's a it's enough of a problem that you can't um, that you can't solder it very well. But if you have some of this and you're just constantly turning slightly, like I am, the actual solder iron. Now bear in mind this is switched off, and I'm going to, have to switch it back on again and put some more solder back on. Um, it will clean off the tip eventually. You may have to spend 15 minutes doing it. But it's well worth it, especially if you've got a tip that you're, you've got used to and it's you know, your sort of favourite tip and you don't want to have to buy a whole set of tips or spend the same amount of money that you may spend on a set of tips just for one because you're going after one of these um, canical, no it looks like a cone, uh, it's a pointy, pointy tip like a pencil, pencil tip. And that's great because you've got a good dispersion of heat all the way around it and it doesn't really matter what sort of angle you get it at uh, and you're going to be working with the same sort of surface and if you get used to that, um, like I say it doesn't matter then how you have it, sometimes other ones flattened off and when I first started I, I liked a real thin one with it slightly flattened off um, and I got used to that and I loved it and I didn't think I'd get used to one of these but I've got used to one of these now and I'd much prefer to use uh, one like this. So, and yeah, and just and just basically, you know, do this to it. Don't try and put too much force between, like sideways force, so you don't do any damage to your wand. Um, sometimes these can break quite easily, especially when they're hot and become a bit of a problem. I've been lucky so far with this one. I wasn't very lucky with the first holding iron I bought. Um, I managed to break that wand very quickly, but that was just breaking down under heat. This this thing here wasn't very good on it at all 
and just do this you'll eventually get it off. Do it when it's hot. Do it when it's hot. You see mine's discolouring a bit now, it's not as silver as what it was. That's because there's no solder on there. And so what I'm gonna have to do now is reheat that up. Reheat that up. Unfortunately my solar station just heat up pretty quickly. <coughs> and um, and recondition this I'm gonna put all this in the appropriate recycling container. <coughs> so I'm just going to let that heat up. And I wonder now if I can get if this will actually bead. I'll put my light down so I can see the tip of it better. No, no, it's not beading at all. Not beating at all. I'm not breathing in these fumes. I'm moving out of the way of them. Probably be better if I did have the extractor on, but there we go. So that's good. And I can wipe that off again if I want to. And just and like I say, it doesn't adjust the temperature. Look how beautiful that tip is again. Look, it doesn't adjust the temperature. Um, There we go. Beautiful. That's ready to go back in the stand and it'll be perfect for when I, when I want to use it again. Put that up out of the way. Turn it all off. And we're good for the next time. So, hey, I hope that's helped. I'm sorry it's like I've dragged it out for so long. Um, but I just continuously don't want to miss anything. But that's it. That, that, that's all there is to it. And as long as you keep that tip clean, keep it tinned at the end when you're not using it, um, and don't have it on too hot. You know, uh, I, I, the way I do mine is uh, when I, because some people say 340, 360, 380 for temperatures, I found the melting point that was a good working melting point, and I didn't go over that. And I think that's what you've got to do for your individual iron because there's no saying that that temperature gauge on my solder station is correct. You know, I don't have the facilities or even the inclination to get something to find out whether that is correct or not. Um, I just want it to do what I want it to do, the job. So it's trial and error. I don't want it to be too hot because it would knock up the tip of my soldering iron. And it costs it cost more electricity to use, but I don't want it to be that cool that it doesn't melt this. And I have to, or I have to hold the tip on the area that I'm soldering for an excessive amount of time. And 315 on that particular solder station with this particular solder is is just correct for me. And that's maybe what you're gonna have to find out for yourself. A little bit of experimenting with your own solder um, and your own solder station to ensure that um, you're melting quick enough, but not too quick, not overheating. Okay, I hope that helps. Cheers for watching guys, bye for now.